and welcome back to the Lance Roberts Podcast. I'm Rich Rosso and excited to have on Gary Collins, who is at simple the simplelifenow.com. So Gary, I mean, obviously you living rural and going into the city, what a, what an incredible change. I lived in the city in Brooklyn and I couldn't wait to get out of New York uh, when mm-hmm. I was little. Um, and Texas in some places is great, right? It's as rural as, as rural as you can get. But again, I've not done the homework. It's a romantic notion. You actually live it. And I think, it, and you wrote this in your book, it returns you to the true spirit of what America stands for, independence, personal freedom, and making your way in the world through your own efforts. And um, I think people do that now, but they're always trying to chase something. And you found something. That's a big difference. So living off the grid, as far as all the preparation that you did um, in the book, I mean, septic systems, I mean, you cover pretty much everything. For a novice like me, it was, um, it was like drinking from a fire hose because I knew, oh, yeah, oh, gosh, what about that? What about that? What? And you covered all of that. Um, and you also wrote Living Off the Grid, which I haven't covered yet, which I will. Uh, so it just shows your lessons and so forth and things that you've done and learned. But outside of the book... And I, go, I know this wasn't an emotional adjustment for you because you've come from this. Um, but what other surprises have you learned outside the book that you've experienced living off the grid? You have a little section about dogs, too, that was sort of entertaining, about even <laughs> looking at what size dog you want to you have. And, uh, hey, is there a dog on my property? I might have, I, what is that? What is, what is that dog doing here? So you come across something different, like, every day <laughs> in, in, well, in it what is, you do. In, it, you're, 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 you run everything, right? So yeah. you're, you're, you're your own utility company, you know, water company, you know, you have to run, you know, run your own business, own security. And I always tell people that if you think the cops are going to get here, if you have a problem <laughs> anytime soon, you're dreaming if they ever even show up. So that comes from my security and, and law enforcement background, a lot of that. And today it's a little rough because people don't respect other people's things and rights and property rights, especially anymore. We all talk about this. All of us who live off grid or have ranches, homesteaders, all that. We all face trespassers. Hmm. People will literally walk right through your gates around them through all kinds of no trespassing signs wow. and be in your front yard. And they act like, what's the big deal? And you know, me, I'm standing out there with a 45, uh-huh. you know, in shorts, flip flops, or what, unless I'm working, you know, depending what's going on, just looking at them going, what are you doing? You know, this, you do realize how wrong you are right now (laughs) and they don't. So that's why I I talk about things like that, that will pop up. That kind of surprised me was the disrespect people have for property rights. Mm. If they think they want to go and check out your property, they'll just walk on it. They don't care. And I think that's kind of a, a reflection of where we are in America today is that utter disrespect for other individuals in general. I, I think it's part of it. You wouldn't think it bleed it out into rural, but it obviously does. Well, yeah. <laughs> so and it, it, there's two, two sides of the coin on that, too, because if, you, if you're like me, when I first bought this property six years ago, I didn't have any neighbors. Well, a lot of people have purchased since then. I have a lot of neighbors and all of that, but this was known as a very rural open area. So people were ATVing and would hunt here, even though technically they shouldn't have been because it was still private property. Uh, but no one lived here. Got it. Now, you know, they're coming around and they haven't been in this area for three, four years. They got all their ATVs, they unload them, and they're just tearing around everywhere, trespassing on everyone's properties. And part of it is they can't see you either. You know, a lot of the houses you can't see, they're in, they're in the woods. Right. So you have to go with that too. So, you know, I'm not a jerk right out of the gate and I just go, Hey, you know, I live here and my house is actually very visible cause I'm at the top of the mountain. So them giving me the excuse, they did not see my house is usually complete BS. They love using statements like that. Not only that, but rurally you have a huge opiate and meth problem. You have people looking around, they're scouting to see hmm. if they can steal anything. And that's just the way it is. That's yeah. a problem right now in America in general. It is. There are so, some great books yeah. about towns that have just gone 
to opioids and they, people do yep. not leave and the drug problem is overwhelming. But you bring out a lot. See, to you, this is second nature. Even you wrote this book and I'm thankfully that you did because people that even think about, do I want to live off the grid? Mm-hmm. Might read this book and go, you know, I'm not ready. I read your book and go, and I went, I'm not ready. I might need to take a step more rural before I get to off the grid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because of everything. Like you said, you are the home surveillance system and fix and the captain. You Anything that yep. goes wrong, you know how to fix that. Yeah. There's a skill and an art to that which makes, which you make it look easy. But oh, I th- God, no. Well, <laughs> no, you know, no. you do. You make it look easy and, and, and you make it very thorough. Um, but some of the ways that you live, the common thread underneath all of this is mm-hmm. the simplicity and yeah. the small and the bigness that's in the smallness of what you do. Because I see new generations, like my daughter's 20, Generation Z, all the younger generations, they want smaller. They don't, they're not falling for the same level of consumerism as millennials and baby boomers. They don't want the big homes. And we yeah. find a lot of baby boomers that cannot sell their McMansions because nobody wants them. I don't want a fifth. I don't want a four thousand square foot home because to me a house is an albatross. I don't look yeah. at a house as an investment. So for me, I look at it totally different. But younger people are looking more and more to. This is why I think your books, as you continue to write them, are going to resonate with these younger generations. Uh, My daughter, when I put these books on Facebook, my daughter first one messages me, Dad, please save me those books. I really want to read Gary's books. That generation loves this stuff. I like it very much too. So the going off the grid, and geez, too bad I didn't leave living off the grid, are great guidebooks for people who think that, can I do this? And realize it's harder work, but the underlying thread of the book is The Simple Life, and then you wrote The Simple Life, uh, yeah. and you wrote a few of those, but the one that I read was The Guide to Decluttering Your Life. And again, I find this one to be amazing because it goes against our entire American system to bog us down, give us more debt, and junk that we don't need. And I, I want you to really go over, which I resonated with you on Coast to Coast, your healthy money mindset. And... You're not only your, first your sentiments about owning a house, but just, and again, owning stuff. And then I want to go into the health um, uh, um, uh, facet of this as well, because okay. I think there's something to it. And I know you also do, which I noticed, you not only do books, you do supplements, you, you just do so much. I mean, from being out there on the grid, you're sure busy <laughs> with, with, well, a, with a business. And everyone says that, uh, you know, I just became technically a full-time writer a year ago, year plus ago. I started off as a health company. I consulted with uh, athletes trying to get into major college football programs. I see. And I was working with a former NFL star, all pro. And we were working together with these kids. And then I had clients. And that's where the supplement line came from. Cause some, and I've never sold it anywhere else but on my website. I used to work for the FDA. It's not, you'll never find it on Amazon. You're not going to find it anywhere else. It's a terrible business model, but it's because I lose control. Mm-hmm. And once I lose control of that, next thing you know, people are counterfeiting it. It just gets into crazy land that way. And I don't, I don't do this just, just for the money. Obviously, I need to make a living, and I would have gone about that a completely different way. But the supplement line is a service to my clients. Yep. That's what it's for. You come to the website. I describe everything in great detail. I have a massive background in health and wellness. That's my, besides law enforcement, I've been an athlete, you know, and training athletes in the health world in some way or form for four decades. If there's anything I know really well, it's nutrition, exercise, and health. That's what I know. And that's bled um, o- that's bled over, I think. Yeah, and to I have your a money, your money mindset. Too. Well, it's everything. Uh, yeah. And I always tell people, and we've talked about the financial freedom book, which is in yes. final editing right now, just got the cover done. Excellent. That's going to blow the lid and the doors off a lot of people. I hope I will have you on again when we get this. the most cutting edge book by far that I've read, that I've written so far. And if, if you go in with an open mind, you're going to go, whoa, 
because the housing, when I talked about that on Coast to Coast, the lines lit up. So what did you say on Coast to Coast? Because that literally woke me up out of my sleep to look you up. Well, I've been on there twice now. Uh, I, I, I've been a fan of George Norrie and, and Coast to Coast for, gosh, I used to listen to it driving across cross country uh-huh. decades. Ago. Uh, Art Bell, when Art Bell was running. Yep. You know, and so it's for me, it's awesome. I mean, I was a fan of this show and now I'm on it, which is very interesting. Mm. But I also come on in a different perspective. But when I told them that, you know, people go, what's he know about What's he talking? Well, first of all, I've owned several homes. <laughs> so Gary, I, I still to take a step lot. to take a step back. What yeah. you said is that you will, and and again, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. And then we got to do this. At the, we have to take a break and talk about this in the next segment. But what you said was about that you will lose money when you sell yep. your house. Is that right? Absolutely. Yep. Okay, great. Well, listen, you are listening to the Lance Roberts podcast with Rich Rosso, and I'm here with. Well, self-help expert and simple life expert, Gary Collins, and we'll be right back. You can get daily real investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet. Sign up for Lance's newsletter now at realinvestmentadvice.com. 